Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how I like to add page transitions to a WordPress website. Now, this is going to be a more advanced tutorial as it's going to require some custom coding. I won't be using any sort of page transition plugins as I find them very limiting and you can't really do a lot of customizations and it can really hurt your performance. The method I will be using is 100% CSS code, so there isn't going to be any extra JavaScript bloat or anything like that to your website. Now here's an example of what we're gonna be pulling off in this WordPress tutorial. I wanted to have it where if you navigate between these pages, just have our logo come up real quick and kind of fade out and scroll up. So you can see again, if I click here, fade out, scroll up. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you a few different ways that we can pull this transition off. First, I'm gonna show you how we can add this page transition to all of your pages. So it would be a global setting and it will go across all of your pages, your posts, anything like that. And then in the second part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to just target certain pages. So I'm gonna just target these pages up here and then any other pages that aren't in this main navigation won't have that page transition. The first step I recommend is installing and activating this plugin right here if you don't have it already. It's called Code Snippets. This is gonna give you the ability to inject the CSS code into the body of all of your pages. So you don't need to actually have this if you know how to edit your functions file, if you're more comfortable going into your functions file and editing and adding the code in there, you can just do that. But I prefer this right here because it gives you the ability to toggle on and off different features and functions like that. So I prefer this plugin rather than editing the functions file. So this is what I'm gonna be showing in this tutorial is how to add this code through code snippets. Once you have the Code Snippets plugin installed and activated, you just head over into Snippets. We'll click Add New, and we're just gonna call this one Page Transition. And then this is where you're gonna copy and paste the code that I have in the description below. And then I'm gonna walk you through all of these different um, CSS commands and what they do. So what we need to do is first copy and paste, like I said, the code. Let me just copy it over here, paste it in here. And it is a lot of code, but it's really not that scary once you go line by line and understand how this stuff works. So what I'm gonna do is click this button right here where it says only run on the front end of the website. You wanna make sure that this is just gonna run on the front end. You don't wanna have it running on the back end pages or anything like that. So I'm just gonna kinda of quickly go through what all of these things are and how you can change it to fit your branding or your style. These first few lines are the most important one. And what you wanna do is make sure that you have this page transition code to the top of your body. So what that means is you wanna make sure that this code is loading before your page loads. So you don't wanna have a situation where all of this stuff loads you know, after all of your content, because I figured out that if you load it like in the footer or something like that, it might be a little glitchy. So what you wanna do is these two lines are up here is making sure that this code is going to get injected into the body of your web page. Then this next line right here is basically uh, a command within WordPress that's going to force this on all of your pages. So it's going to go across all of your single pages, regular pages, your front page, your home. So this should cover pretty much all of your WordPress pages that are on the front end. So later in the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how we can change this to just certain pages. Then down here, this is all just CSS code from here down and a little HTML. So the very first one is we need to make sure that we have the page transition itself. And so that's what this CSS class is. And you gotta understand a little bit of CSS to kind of follow the rest of this tutorial. But basically what this is is it's giving it a position of fixed, and so it's always going to be starting right here where my mouse cursor is. It's gonna go 100%, and then down here, if you look, we're gonna manipulate how high it is at an animation keyframe. So it's not so scary once you understand how this stuff works. So the first thing we need to do is change the color of the background. So of course, this color is gonna be this right here. Let me go here. Actually, I need to save this so you can see it. So save and activate. And then if I hit refresh, that blue color right here is the color of this background. Let me close this. So if you don't want this blue color, you're just gonna change it to fit your branding or your style. You just change your background color right here. Then the rest of the stuff you don't really need to touch. You wanna make sure that you keep this at fixed, top left. Like I said, it's gonna be a width of 100%. So I'll go in here and just change this to like 50% so you can see, um, this is how I like to learn CSS. You just kind of just play around with the code. 
So now you're going to see it's only going to fill up about 50%. So it's, if you're going for that look, I guess that could work. But in this case, we want to make sure that it sticks to 100%. And then overflow hidden, if you have any sort of uh, overflow issues, this will hide it. You're going to want to make sure that your Z index is at a really large number so that this page transition will override things that could uh, have a higher Z index, like your header or anything like that. So you just want to make sure you keep that at a larger value. Then this animation right here called loading is being targeted right here. So if you highlight something within code snippets, it will show you where it is down here. And then this is how fast the animation is going to be. So we have it at 1.5 seconds right now in just like kind of like a normal uh, animation um, sequence. So if you want it to be a lot slower or faster, you would just change it right here. And the next thing is how we were able to add that logo into the middle of the screen. So if you remember, when you click here, we have the logo right here. Let me save this because it's back at 50%. So once you navigate here, of course, this big logo right here is this container right here. So in the HTML, we have that page transition class that we just covered. Then inside there, we have a ID called wiki logo. And then I just have our simple SVG image, and then make sure you add some alt text right here for the image as well. So it's as simple as just a wrapping container with a logo in the middle. It's very simple, lightweight code. You really can't get any more lightweight than this. So if you look right here, we have wiki logo, and we just have it as an animation of fade out one second, ease in and out. Uh, this is how many times you want it to do um, the fade in. So you want to just do it once and then you're going to want to make sure that this uh, web web kit animation fill mode is at forwards. I figured out that if you don't have this, it doesn't quite animate the correct way. The next CSS code right here is targeting the image inside that container. So wiki logo and then image. So this is all just to make sure that it fits right in the middle of the screen. So position absolute top 50% left 50% and then I'm doing something a little bit different here where I just want it to be 40%. So if you look right here, the logo is only filling up 40% of the width of the container. So like I said, let's go ahead and change this to a really large number, like 80%. Hit save, and now you're going to see the logo is going to be really large. So depending on your logo, your use case, you can go ahead and change it if you want it to be smaller, bigger. I think 80% is really large for this. So let's go ahead and change that back to 40 and then this right here is just making sure that it's being aligned in the middle. So you need to make sure you have all of this stuff to make sure that it always fits right in the middle of the screen. Let me just hit save changes again. And now at the bottom of the CSS, I like to have our animations down here. So if you remember the one called loading, that was the main container right here called loading. And what it's doing is at 0%, we want to make sure it's 100% height. And then at 60% is when the animation is actually going to start. So you want to make sure that you have the height back at 100%. And then for the next 40%, so from 60 to 100%, we want to go to 0%. So basically, if you watch my mouse, 100% is the height right here. So when my mouse is all the way to the bottom, that's 100%. And then when it hits 60% of the 1.5 seconds, it's going to scroll up like this to go to 0%. So it's really just simple CSS code that is just forcing 100% back down to zero. Now, what I like about this code right here is this is just kind of like the framework for what you can do if you want different types of animations. So if you want to have animations go from left to right, from the top down, this is going to make it a lot easier. So you can actually have you know unlimited capabilities of how you can animate these things. But in this case, I wanted to keep it just very simple where the height starts at 100% and just scrolls up. Nothing crazy. And I prefer it to scroll up. I think it just looks better than going down or left and right. But this is, a, if you know a little bit more CSS, you can go ahead and just add, you know, the different type of code in here. The next thing is the fade out animation for the wiki logo. So for the main logo, you have your keyframes fade out. So it starts at 70%. So from zero to 70, it's, it's default always at an opacity of one. And so if you want to make it where the animation is a lot slower, more subtle, let's do it where instead of 70%, let's go to like 30%, just so you can kind of see the difference. 
So the logo is going to be fading a lot longer than normal. So you can see right here, it's slower fading, which, you know, I think that I actually might look a little bit better than the 70%. So I'm going to actually just keep that at 30% because I think it looks a little bit better. Yeah, I think that looks fine. So that's why you're going to have to play around with how quick things fade in and out depending on how quick your animations are. So if you start to change this to be a slower thing, you're going to have to start to play around with these numbers to make it kind of offset from how quick it is going to be animating. Then this next step is uh, it's kind of optional, but what I like to do is depending on if it's on a mobile device, you're going to want to change the width of that logo because if you remember up here, 40% on a mobile device is actually really small. So let me go into here. Let's go to like a mobile size. So if I go right here, I'll hit refresh. And you can see that I have it at 75% width. So when I go here, go to the next page, it's at 75%. Because if you keep that at 40%, let me do that right here. So if, let's say you don't have this uh, media query right here. And you just have it where the logo is always at 40%. It's actually going to look really small on a mobile device. So if you go here. You can see it's there, itty bitty. So if you want a small logo, you don't have to add this meta query, but I actually think it looks better at like a 75%. So I'm gonna add that back, hit save, and then go right here and just make sure it looks good. So that's the approach to do it where if you wanna have this page transition at a global level. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna change this one line right here on line three, and I'm just gonna paste in this code right here. Let me do this. And like I said, I'll have this in the link in the description below. So what this is gonna do is, if is page, so I'm gonna only target these pages up here now. About, services, portfolio, resources, contact. So if we go back into here, you're gonna see we have services, resources, contact, about, portfolio. So let me go ahead, hit save, and let me just show you how this is gonna work now. So if you go to services, the animation's gonna go. If I go back to the home, no page transition. Let me go down to something like uh, privacy policy, no page transition. So I have it where you could just target the name of the slug of these pages and it's going to work. So let me go back into here and again we have is page array and then you can have all of your slugs right here. Now with WordPress, you can target things by a slug or by the ID of the page. Um, I think it's easier to just manage it at a slug level so you can kind of visually see what these pages are in the code. Because if you go to the ID, each one of these is gonna have an ID. So the about page would be something like ID, uh, where is it? It would be ID 6733. So you don't wanna have that, it's too complicated. And I'm like, I like to keep it simple. And so if you're not familiar with how to get a slug, if you just go into your page, you can go to quick edit and right there, that's the name of your slug. So it's usually the name of the title if you haven't changed it in just lowercase. So in this case, it's just about. So if you do happen to change your slugs, uh, you need to go ahead into your page uh, transition code right here and update it right here. So like I said, that's as simple as it is. You just change that one line of code and now you can just target those pages. And that's it for this WordPress tutorial. Make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.